guys, so I've been reading the comments and I saw double unders is a big one that you wanted to learn. I had Olympic lifting on my list, but I figured this would be a quick, easy one to give you guys some tips so hopefully we can take your double unders to another level or maybe you'll start to be able to get them in your workouts or just kind of get the feeling. So I wanna share a few things that I've learned about double unders with you and I'm hoping this will really help. All right guys, let's talk rope length and rope. So most gyms will have jump ropes for you. I know we have some at CrossFit Polaris for our athletes. However, I think it's super important that if you want the consistency to have your own rope, you can get a jump rope for 20 or $25 uh, and then you know you're using the same rope every single time. So this is my rope. It's something I've worked very hard on is to get to where the rope should actually sit. So when I stand on my rope and I bring my two feet together and I bring it right in, sitting right at my sternum, if I would extend my handles, they go right to my armpits. This is gonna be somewhere that I think should be your goal to work towards. In the beginning, starting out with a longer rope is not a bad thing. So my rope used to sit when I stood on it and I released the handles, it went right to the top of my shoulder and I've worked really hard on cutting down those extra inches to be more efficient with my ropes. And I'm gonna tell you, give you some efficiency drills. The biggest thing to think about is our elbows, right? So with the shorter rope, which mine is relatively short now, I keep my elbows back and I can see my hands at all times. If when I'm learning at any point, my hands start to get wide and I have a very short rope, now I've just cut my feet off. So having a little bit of a longer rope until we become super efficient and we can maintain that positioning with our elbows in tight and our hands right in our peripheral vision is gonna be really important. The next thing I wanna address is gonna be your cable. So I see a lot of people come in with a speed rope or a cable that's this thin, that weighs nothing, that's like a wire. This should be our end goal. This should not be somewhere that we're starting because it's gonna be very hard to feel the rhythm of the jump because this rope does not have much weight to it. And if you whip yourself with the wire rope in the beginning, which when you're learning, you're probably gonna do a lot of, it hurts a lot. So what I would encourage you to use is actually a little bit of a thicker cable. So you can see the difference here. The pink one is gonna be a lot heavier, not super heavy, so it doesn't feel like a weighted Zeus rope or heavy, heavy rope, but it just has enough weight to where you can feel the rhythm and the repetition of the rope as it goes around versus just flinging around the light rope, hoping that it's gonna go under your feet twice. The first thing I highly encourage you guys to do is become efficient with your single unders. Think about for your singles, slowly trying to make your jump just a little bit bigger because that's what's gonna transition into your double under. So for my singles, it's the exact same hand position that I would be holding for a double under. So my elbows are gonna be at my sides. They don't have to be glued in, but I'm almost gonna pull them back. At all times, out of my peripheral vision, I can see my hands, okay? That's very important in the double under. So from here, all that's gonna happen, I'm gonna think about turning over my wrist, like I'm almost shaking water off, if you've ever had water in your hands. So just that turnover motion. And then I wanna make sure I'm not using my full arm. So what that's gonna look like, I'm just lightly thinking about turning over my wrist and a nice smooth jump. So I would highly encourage you to get really comfortable with your singles where you can make sure that you're keeping your elbows pulled back and you can see your hands at all times and you're just focusing on turning over those wrists. So once we've mastered the singles and we feel like we're pretty efficient, we're getting the hang of holding our elbows in tight, relaxing, we're ready to progress to the next stage, I would encourage you to do two drills without your rope first. The first one is gonna be your bar tap. It's gonna teach you the rhythmic jump. So in a double under, we need to have a nice, smooth, relaxed jump. So, and it also needs to be a little bit bigger so we have time to get the rope under our feet twice. So for a bar tap, I encourage you to find a bar that's maybe six inches above your hands when you extend them. And then what we're gonna do is as you jump, say tap, tap, and you're gonna tap the bar twice, come back down and rebound right back up. So what it's gonna look like, so what this is teaching me is in my head, as I tap the bar twice, I can also hear it just like I'd hear my rope. So I'm saying tap, tap. As I come back to the floor, I wanna absorb and be able to rebound back up. It's also keeping me in a nice long position so I don't get caught up in trying to lift my knees and land really hard when I jump. 
So once you've got the bar taps down, I would progress you into the penguin taps. This one, we're now gonna lower our hands, just like we would be doing the jump rope. It's the same idea. So as I jump, I'm gonna tap my legs twice in the air. When I hit the ground, my hand should be off of my legs. So what it looks like, So when my feet are on the ground, my hands should not be touching my legs. When my feet are on the ground, my hands should be off. This is going to really mimic the turnover that we have when we're doing the double unders. So now it's time to grab our rope. So the next thing I like to do is our rope should look like a rainbow, or it should be a nice pretty arch when it comes around, and you should also hear it whistle. In the single under, you're probably not gonna hear the rope whistle, but in the double under, it moves a little bit faster. So it's gonna have that whistle to it. So what happens, for this drill, we're just gonna do a couple, elbows pulled back, hands where I can see them in my peripheral vision, and I'm just gonna think about flicking the rope around my body and hearing the whistle. I'll step back over, elbows in tight, flicking it around. One more time. So what I'm looking for, I can hear the whistle, so I know I'm spinning it fast enough, and I can see the nice pretty arch as the rope comes around. The other thing is I'm practicing it hitting just about six inches in front of my feet. When I do a double under, I don't want the rope to land on my feet. I want it to land right in front so I can hear when the rope hits the mat. From here, once I've got the hang of that, I'm gonna take it into some single, single doubles. So I'm gonna do three or four singles and then after that fourth single, I'm gonna try to get one double under it. So what that's gonna look like, back to my singles. So what you'll notice there is when I'm going to spin for the double and I'm spinning it a little bit harder, you can probably hear the whistle. Or if you're practicing this at your own gym, you should be able to hear the whistle. The jump should not change a whole lot between our single and our double, except for making it a tiny bit bigger when we're going into that double under. So when I watch people in my classes and when I try to help people with their timing of the double unders, a lot of times what I notice is that we're spinning the rope too late. So for instance, if I am jumping and I'm at the top of my jump and then I'm starting to spin my rope, I'm gonna be spinning it too late. So you wanna think about as soon as your toes are leaving the ground, now we're starting to spin that rope hard to make sure it can get around the two repetitions that it, we need it to go around. If we wait until we're hanging in the air and then decide to spin the rope, we're gonna end up landing on a rope and it's not gonna make it under our feet twice. So if you feel like you're very, very close, but you're not quite getting your rope around twice, Think about speeding up or spinning the rope earlier. So as soon as your feet are leaving the ground and you're on your way up in your jump, we're already turning that ro um, rope over as hard as we can. All right guys, so the last thing I wanna talk about is the start. So you'll see some people pick up their ropes and go straight into double unders. I think that's something to work towards. I still do a single. So for me, getting the, the my body to be able to relax and just finding the rhythm from the start really helps me. So I feel like I don't lose too much time, but when I pick up my rope, I'll hit one single under to get that jump ready, and then I'll go right into my double unders. Once I'm in my double unders, I can keep flowing, but if I try to pick my rope up and I miss that first jump, I just keep getting stuck in my rope. So I think it's, it's important to just remember it's only one single under and it's not gonna waste you a ton of time, but if we can set ourselves up with that smooth rhythmic jump, that may help your double unders down in the future. So the only way we're gonna get better at double unders is by practicing. This can be one of the most frustrating movements in the world, but once you have the timing, once you have the feeling, you're gonna have them. So what I'd encourage you to do is spend five or 10 minutes, three times a week practicing. When you hit the point where you're ready just to throw your rope across the room, we've probably done enough. Take a deep breath, hang your rope up, and we'll come back another day. I think I think also what we encourage our classes to do is we look at the workout and we tell them, okay, if there's a hundred double unders today in the workout, maybe we're doing the first 25. We're gonna work on achieving that first 25 double unders. And then from there, we'll finish out the rest of the reps with our singles so we can keep moving through the workout, but yet still be getting in good practice. The other thing we'll do with coaches or as coaches here at Polaris is, depending on the workout, if there's 40 double unders and somebody knows they can hit 20 consistently, and maybe not 20 in a row, but they can get to 20 without getting stuck, we'll cut their reps for that day to where they're only doing those 20 double unders and they're achieving their 20. Uh, that allows them to keep moving, to, 
to make the workout fit them so that they can keep improving and working on their skills without avoiding the skill. If we avoid it, we're never gonna get better at it. So there's gonna be the time and the place. If you're not sure, ask your coach. I'm sure they'll help you out. But I think trying to get double unders into those workouts so you can continue practicing is gonna be the best way to learn. I hope this video helped you. These are just a couple of the drills that I love. I think they'll help with the timing. I think the biggest thing with double unders is just remember to stay relaxed. We don't wanna get as tight as we can and just try to feel the rope, listen to the tap tap, work on your nice smooth jump. The smoother your jump is, the more relaxed you are the easier and more efficient your double unders will be and hopefully you'll start to hit big sets in your workouts uh, thanks for tuning in feel free to comment below on anything else you want to see or if you have questions about any of the drills i went over today best of luck and i'll see you guys soon